tighten credit, but it's having an unforeseen impact. Call it cash for comfort. Banks are being told to lend to small and medium-sized businesses, but they are worried about the risks, so banks are using copper as collateral. So how about that? Financing collateral, I mean, what? Companies are buying copper overseas, paying a small percentage of the value up front, and then gets bank credit for the rest. Then the company sells the copper, uses the cash as it pleases until it has to pay the bank back for its share of the metal. So while Chinese imports of iron ore and crude are falling, copper imports are rising. It is just that it is not being consumed. Instead, it is sitting in warehouses. How much of this is going to create another risk at a time when they're trying to iron out all these imbalances in the system? The International Monetary Fund says that the shadow banking system is one of the key risks in China's increasingly complex regulatory system. China's central bank, the PBOC estimates that shadow banking accounts for over 20% of all outstanding loans. Zhou Zhang, chairman of China Mezzanine Capital, is joining Joining us from Hong Kong to give us his insights on what's happening. So you are a former banker with UBS, and then now you t you turn to, to the shadow banking industry. A lot of different uh, ratings agencies, brokerages, and banks have come out with different numbers about the extent, the size of the shadow banking system. As someone who is directly involved in this line of work, how big really is it? It's about 40% uh, of last year's GDP. It is clearly sizable and it's rapidly growing. Um, the concerns about the quality of assets in shadow banking is misplaced, though. Um, I think the quality, by and large, is very good, um, at least as good as uh, the banking sector loans. Yeah, but uh, there are question marks about the quality of banking sector loans as well. So, Joe, uh, be and of course and the, uh, yeah. Yeah, be yes. honest with us. How much bad loans do you actually have? Nobody knows, uh, but in the shadow banking industry in which I uh, work, um, I think the asset quality is reasonably good because uh, we use our own money, we manage our own money very carefully, and uh, we have skin in the game. Yeah, uh, but you're charging minimum 24% to a lot of these small microtype loans. You're keeping them capped at about 20,000 U.S. dollars. But for bigger players yes. in the shadow banking industry, and then now you're also bringing copper financing as, as a new type of collateral, um, can you take us through what sort of risks this means and what sort of stage we're in as the government is tough about trying to rein this in? I think the government is concerned about the rapid loan growth, you know, year in, year out. For the past 35 years, Chinese bank loans uh, balance has grown at an 18 percent compound annual rate. And that is clearly not sustainable, that is dangerous. And of course, uh, when the even when the economy is growing rapidly, sensible lending opportunities are not growing nearly as fast. Therefore, uh, bankers are forced, in a way, to move from quality loans to ordinary loans to subprime loans and then eventually to silly loans. And that's exactly what happened to the U.S. Uh, before, 19, uh, before 2007. And, uh, you know, we are moving in that direction. Um, a lot of people have said that what's happening in China, the China bears out there, is very similar to the U.S. subprime uh, meltdown, and this is going to take China down. Do you see that happening? That is not happening in the next few years, but of course we are moving in that direction. And the risk is clearly there, but the risk is not in the shadow banking industry. We must ask the question, why is shadow banking growing so rapidly, despite the hostility by the government and even by the public? I think the reason, the only reason is the Chinese government has tightly regulated interest rates, and the interest rates are below inflation rate, and that is a risk. And because mm. of uh, negative real interest rates and uh, loan demand is artificially boosted and Chinese banks live in the false illusion that loans are uh, feasible. They are not feasible. They are feasible yeah. only because rates are low. Yeah, but we're hearing on a daily basis that they're liberalizing interest rates. And even today, the PBOC governor is saying we need to boost credit for small and micro-sized companies. So is just the pace of the reforms not happening enough, fast enough? Um, you know, um, in, uh, in 1986, I uh, was at the People's Bank of China. I wrote a paper uh, on interest rate liberalization. And since then, um, I have heard that uh, for 27 years, 
um, and I'm, uh, I'm losing confidence in that uh, pace of liberalization. And if anybody is still uh, interested in that topic, um, then good luck. Uh, but I think the pace is a little too slow.